Hi, this is Julie Harland, and I'm your math gal. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where you could search for any of my videos organized by topic. We're working on equations and graphs of hyperbolas, and this is part three, hyperbolas centered at the origin. And in this video, we're going to look at the graph of a hyperbola centered at the origin, write it in standard form, and then write it in general form. So here, remember, the standard form of a hyperbola centered at the origin is either x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1, or y squared over b squared minus x squared over a squared equals 1. And we have the x-intercepts. If it's in the first form, y-intercepts. In the second form, asymptotes are the same in either case. Those are lines, equations of two lines. And what's the general form? The general form means you have something of this form. If it's centered at the origin, ax squared plus by squared plus c equals zero. A, B, and C are constants, and usually we'll also make those integers so we won't have any fractions. So here's our first problem. Write the standard form of the hyperbola shown, and then write it in general form. So we have to look at this very carefully and see where the intercepts are. All right, so I, and I haven't drawn it very perfectly here, there's an intercept right here, and there's actually there's an intercept right here that you don't see very well. <laughs> I didn't mark it clearly. I see the intercepts. Okay, now remember, this is going left and right, so that means the x squared part is positive, so it starts with an x squared over, all right, now, since the intercepts are at 5 and negative 5, that's 5 squared. You could write 25 as well. And then it's minus, there's no y-intercepts, right? So that's the minus, the y squared has the minus sign in front of it. And let's see, where does it go in this box? Look at the box. That helps you see what number would be under the y, and that's a 1, right? Positive 1 and negative 1. So that's just over 1 squared equals 1. So we could write that as x squared over 25 minus y squared over 1, or just y squared. That's up to you. And this is our standard form. Now, if we want to write it in general form, it means just get rid of the um, fractions. So you're going to multiply by the least common denominator and set the whole equation equal to 0. All right? So see, I'm going to move this over just a little bit. And so what's the least common denominator? 25. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 25. So make sure you multiply it by every term on each side. So we have 25 times x squared over 25. Well, the 25's will cancel. Hopefully you see that without any trouble. That gives you x squared. Then we have 25, we have a minus sign, and 25 times y squared, which is just 25y squared. Nothing's going to cancel there. And then we have to remember to do 25 times 1 equals 25. Don't forget to put equals 25. So there's only one thing left to do, set the equation equal to 0, minus 25 equals 0 will do it. And that is the general form. So here, this was our standard form. which is much easier to graph, right? Because it tells us what the x-intercepts are. It tells us it's easy to figure out what the asymptotes are. By the way, what are the equations of these asymptotes? It's always the y value over the x that value, so it's 1 over 5 will be the slope. So our asymptotes, by the way, are going to be y equals plus or minus 1 fifth x. Those are the asymptotes. I didn't ask you to do that, but it's good practice to be able to write those out. And also, if you ask for the intercepts, you could say they're 5, 0, and negative 5, 0. Okay. The directions were simply to write the standard form and then the general form. So what I've boxed here is what the, the question asked. Okay. 
Next one, write the standard form of the hyperbola shown and then write it in general form. Does this look familiar? Check it out. The asymptotes are exactly the same. The little box around her is the same, but it is not the same hyperbola because this one is going up and down. So this one has y-intercepts, right? This one has y-intercepts at what? Plus or minus 1. I'm not writing them as ordered pairs, but of course that would be 0, 1 and 0, negative 1. And so the asymptotes, the equations of the asymptotes are exactly the same as in the last equation. Because the y value is the 1, and I check it out over here, it's going over 5 again and to the left 5. So the asymptotes look exactly the same as in the last problem. So this time, since it's going up and down, it's positive in front of the y squared. So I have y squared over, okay. Now, the number associated with a y are these intercepts, plus or minus 1, so it's going to be 1 squared minus x squared over, now where does it, the box go through the x-axis at 5 and negative 5, so that's 5 squared. There we have it. So this is our standard form. And of course, you can write that more simplified as y squared minus x squared over 25 equals 1, that would also be acceptable. Or y squared over 1 minus x squared over 25 equals 1. How about the general form? The general form means I'm going to have to set it equal to 0 and get rid of fractions. So let's first just multiply both sides by the least common denominator of 25, just like we did in the previous problem. So if y squared times 25, that's 25y squared minus, now when I do x squared over 25 times 25, the 25's will cancel and we have x squared and we have to remember to do the 25 times 1. Because I don't have a lot of space on here, I haven't been showing this step, but if you wanted to show it, you're really doing 25 times y squared minus 25 times x squared over 25 equals 25 times 1. Okay? So if you need to show that step, it's great, no problem. Okay, I was just kind of running out of space. So this is the general form. This is the standard form. And of course, this other way I wrote it is also the standard form. All right, here's one more problem. Why don't you go ahead and try this one all on your own? Put the video on pause, see if you can write it in standard form and then in general form. Okay, so I notice there are x-intercepts, so I know it's going to start with the x squared, the positive, right? And we're going to have a my squared, so we can sort of set. Notice this rectangle here is really just a square. It's like the x-intercepts are 3 and negative 3, and it goes through 3, and, and the box goes through 3 and negative 3 on the y-axis. So I'm going to have 3 squared, so y squared over 9, so either of these are, would be the standard form. And to get general form, I just multiply both sides by the least common denominator, 9. So what does that give? If I do 9 times the first term, the 9's cancel. I have x squared, y squared over 9 times 9. You'll just get y squared, and 1 times 9 is 9. So I just have set equal to 0, and there's 0. So we've got it in general form. Some people look this right here, x squared, say, hey, that's a circle. Uh-uh. If it was plus y squared, it would be a circle. Okay, but this is an ellipse because of that minus sign. I think on that previous problem, I forgot to set it equal to 0. Let's check it out. Yep, I forgot the last step. Let's do the last step here. So we have 25y squared minus x squared minus 25 equals 0. That is the general form. Sometimes people do write it with a constant on the right-hand right side, so 
I don't think every book is even consistent about that. Okay, so we're done. We've done three problems, and this one here could be thought of as the standard form or the x squared over 9 minus y squared over 9 equals 1. You know, if you didn't want to write 3 squared, that also is considered standard form. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where you can view all of my videos which are organized by topic.